Hi guys, Coach Fens here from FTP Training and welcome to another Friday Tips with Fens. All right, what we're gonna do, this time of year, you know, we're in winter now and it's, um, it's that time of year where motivation's suffering and potentially kids are coming home from school and they've got colds and sickness. So how do we overcome it? What do we do to, um, you know, get through periods like this um, and be the best we can be? Um, it is a really difficult time and obviously making the call as a self-coached athlete can be very difficult. Um, I generally work on a couple of rules of thumb when it comes to illness and, and they're things that you need to establish straight off the bat. Firstly, how, what is the sickness? What are the symptoms? You know, a lot of symptoms can be from the neck up and therefore they can be that sore throat to start that develops then into um, major congestion, blocked nose, and then, you know, that horrible green, um, you know, blocking that you're gonna try and get out, you know, all that mucus. When that sort of stuff happens, the biggest risk, of course, is for it to go down onto the chest and give you sort of pneumonia or give you some other major problem that's gonna last a lot, lot longer. So I, I look at those on a case-by-case -case basis as a coach and advise accordingly. If it is above the neck and there's no fever, there's no raised temperature, doing some light exercise generally is not gonna cause any issues. But if you've got intervals planned for that week, I'd definitely say don't do them. You know, but uh, an hour or 40 minutes just turning the legs over at a very aerobic pace or recovery is not gonna um, generally hurt that condition. It's not gonna make it worse. Um, in fact, it, it can be proven to be helping those conditions by stimulating and improving the immune function. So, and it also, of course, means that your legs are turning over. So as an athlete, you're not going, oh my goodness, I'm not training, I'm, you know, I'm suddenly putting weight on and I feel terrible. You are still going through the process of turning the legs over. So then when it means when you, the symptoms have gone and you get back into your training, you're actually feeling like you haven't really missed much. Um, and everything's still working, you know, all of your peripheral adaptations, your central adaptations have been maintained. They won't have really dropped off at all, which means you're ready to, you know, drop back into a, a, another block of training. If, however, you, you start that sort of process and the next day your symptoms become worse, I'd say, look, you, you're going to need to address that and you're going to go, gonna need to make a call. I generally advise just taking a few days off. Um, you know, a few days off again is not going to hurt you massively in that long term, all right? Um, but it could help you massively if you then don't have to have two weeks off to get over what you've, um, you know, what you've caught. So take a couple of days off, do all the right things, get lots of sleep, drink lots of fluids, eat good healthy food, and make sure you really look after yourself and try and take yourself out of any, uh, you know, the stressful situations. Try not to worry too much, you know? Um, if you've got an event coming up, that can be very, very difficult, of course. So again, you, you've, you've just got to rely on the fact that the training you've done to get you to that point just before the event is not suddenly just going to leave you. It's not suddenly going to disappear. It's still going to, have, uh, you know, it still created the adaptations that you need to perform well. What you do need to do is be well. So you've got to focus on getting well. So if that takes two or three days where you really try and you know, get rid of whatever it is and really knock it on the head and then resume some of that light training, that light turning the legs over on the stationary trainer where you're not tempted to suddenly go out with the bunch and go smashing yourself and reverting back, you know, regressing back into the cold again, that really, really helps you. And it's that call that, again, as a self-coached athlete, it's difficult to make. Me as a coach, I will tell you to do that. And, I, you know, that, then, and that makes that choice much, much easier. Um, but remember that training uh, adaptations don't just disappear, okay? They don't disappear overnight. You may get a little bit of um, detraining of your, of, of your cardiovascular system, of your heart as a pump. That's why you see that elevated heart rate when you get back into it. But all those peripheral adaptations that have taken two, three, four, five months, have been developed over years, they don't just go. Okay, so they take a little bit longer than a week or a few days. All right, so that's one sort of symptom, that classic cold situation. If you wake up in the morning and you've got that virus, you've got that elevated temperature, take your temperature, it's 39 degrees, you're boiling, then definitely don't do anything, don't train. Again, I'd say just take as many days off as you need to get over that viral infection. So at least until your core temperature or your, your temperature comes down to within that normal range. And that's really important. Viruses 
more difficult for the body to, to deal with often than a bacterial, just a, you know, a snotty nose. And the raised core temperature is, is, is happening to try and defeat and beat that viral infection. That's what it does. But it can also cause major issues. It can, in, it can cause uh, an inflammation within the heart and can cause problems that, that if you go out and train, um, can be, again, really problematic for you. So the best thing to do, just call it, okay? Take some time off. And that may be a little bit longer. It may take two, three, four days. I'd advise maybe going to the doctor's just to make sure everything's okay. Uh, you know, antibiotics aren't going to help deal with that. But what often happens with a viral infection is your immune system gets suppressed and then you get that secondary bacterial infection as well. What antibiotics can do in that stage is hopefully not the bacterial infection on your head. So it does give your body the ability to try and d deal with that virus. Go and see your GP in these situations though. You know, they, they, they know what they're doing. They see lots of this common cold. Um, and flus and, and they can make that like a coach they can sort of make that call for you okay so i hope that's helped um difficult time of year best things prevention you know stay away from people that are sick if you can at home again if the kids are ill very very difficult but remember that most viruses and most bacterial infections are caused via hand to mouth nose um contact 90 percent often so the easiest way to deal with that is not like they're saying use the Glade 40 and spray it all over the house. The easiest way is for you just to have a little bo bottle of antibacterial cream. And, you know, around the house, a bit pedantic, but if you've got a big event you've just trained really hard for, sometimes worth doing. A little bit of antibacterial, um, you know, really does go a long way to help you stay um, healthy and well. All right, guys, hope that's helped and I uh, hope to catch you out in the road or trail. Bye-bye.